right, so I got some cross-reference material again from uh, the Bhagavatam uh, that, that fits so nicely with uh, a, a lot of the other things that we've been talking about and uh, speaking about. And like I've mentioned many times before, th that's what I really love is when you're studying different scriptures from different traditions or different backgrounds, and you see them saying the same thing. I always am so... Uh, excited about that because it really demonstrates the truth of what Sri Ramakrishna said, that truth is one, that it's just spoken in many different ways, and that really the essence of all religion is the same. And it's only ego and our love of ego that makes us uh, focus on distinctions to make our own special. So here we have the sage Bharata telling the king, uh, answering the king's question, uh, about the nature of the self, about the purpose of life, about what is truth. And he says to him, O king, said Bharata, to know yourself is the highest knowledge. And to know who you are, to know what you are, not just your personality, not just the, the easy answers, but what is it to be human? What is it to be alive? How is it that we're alive? I was watching a science documentary the other day, and the, 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 the question they were trying to answer is, why is there anything at all? Why is the, the universe just nothing? How come there's something there and not just nothing? And so this is kind of that same question. What is the nature of life? What is the nature of what we're about? What is this for? O King, said Bharata, to know, to know thyself is the highest knowledge. But this knowledge of the self does not arise so long as a man thinks that he can find happiness in this transitory world. And there's a big clue. So happiness, that, that lasting, contented happiness, cannot be found in this world. And we've talked about that why so many times. You know, that everything in this life has an expiration date. Nothing lasts. So all of your joys and pleasures and excitements and experiences they're all just short little pieces that don't last, and uh, you have to constantly pursue them again and again and again in order to collect them. But even in that form, you're always left wanting. And so as long as you believe that the answer for your life, the purpose of your life, lies in this world of changing, it's going to be a frustrating endeavor for you. You're never going to find the deep fulfillment that you're longing for inside. So he goes on to say, man remains bound by his own deeds, good or evil, because of the identification of the self with these three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Those are just the three fundamental elements, as it were. You know, tamas is inertia, that, that which slows things down, makes things immobile. Rajas is the exact opposite of that. It's frenetic energy, lots of action, activity. And then sattva is kind of the equilibrium between those two when, they, when there's an equal calmness or contentedness. And so you can always solve one with the other. You know, tamas is solved with action, with rajas. And rajas is solved by sattva, you know, bringing you into that calm state. And so all of us are taking these three different components and everything manifests in the universe by the amount of rajas, tamas, and sattva that is involved in them, the levels of vibration, as it were. When we identify with this body, with this mind, with those things that are a product of the gunas, we feel our bondage, we feel our suffering, we feel, we feel uh, the pain of life. He says, good or evil attaches itself to the mind alone and never to the true self. Right, so, so that is the value in finding the separation between you and mind, understanding that you're not the body, that you're not the mind, because that is where all of the misery is held. <laughs> it's in the things of mind and body. And so by knowing your freedom from those, knowing your separate self from those things, you can choose to engage with them or not. You don't have to be subject to your moods and to the pains and pleasures of the body. That, that you're independent and you can find a strength and equanimity of calmness and tranquility that is not conditioned by the gunas, by the body and mind and all the things in the transitory world. He says, the divine self appears as an individual spirit 
because of its association and identification with the mind. So the fact that the soul, the spirit, that which is you, that which is watching mind and experiencing body, that separate self, that infinite self, it gets dragged in to the, the troubles and conditions of the mind and body because it becomes identified with them. This is my body. This is me. This is my mind. And because of that sense of responsibility that attaches to us, to the spirit, uh, because of that identification with the body, well, because of that we suffer. Because of that we're in bondage. Because of that we're in this spin cycle of life. He goes on to say, as are the deeds, good or evil, which attach themselves to the mind, so is the new birth when you die, when you go on to your next life. You know, it's going to be based on what you've attached to yourself. You know, what kind of propensities you bring along with you, what kind of habits you bring along with you, what kind of states of mind that you've established yourself in are you going to bring along. So each life just picks up where you left off in the previous one as you continue growing and continue changing until you realize your identity. He says here, man enjoys or suffers according to his deeds. The mind, therefore, is the cause of bondage as well as the cause of freedom. Yes. So free yourself from the mind. Don't be controlled by your moods. Keep discerning and looking for that part of you that's not changing. If it's changing, it's not you. If it's not changing, that alone is real. First, experiment in any way that you can. Read the scriptures if you want ideas from any tradition. Do the practices and find out who you are. And then hold yourself in that space and don't identify with anything else other than that which is unchanging. And that's where your equanimity of mind comes, where your contentment comes, where your strength comes, uh, where your understanding about this life comes.